Welcome back everybody, Boyd here with you again. I'm uh, continuing to put in some work on my 3D printed Nautilus here. Wanted to give you guys an update today. Uh, I'm getting really close to sealing up the hull and connecting all the pieces together. I just finished up printing the last of the parts for this model, so everything's been printed. Probably got uh, a little over 250 hours of print time and everything, so that's not too bad. Uh, I had to finish up printing up a bunch of the small little detail parts on the resin printer. And um, I made a couple of Facebook posts last week showing you that I was um, working on some of the lighting and everything and getting ready to uh, you know, work in my electronics. Now, this electronic setup that, that I put in this is uh, kind of my own concoction. So, unfortunately, guys, there won't be like a specific kit out there that you can order. Um, but I'll kind of walk you through what I did here, and you guys could probably put it together yourselves. It wasn't too difficult at all. It just took a little bit of um, uh, brainstorming here a little bit to kind of figure out how I wanted to wire everything up and uh, make it all work together. But let me take you through it really quick. Um, the one thing that I did order in here is I got one of these little remote control boards from Tenet Controls. Uh, normally they have their switch set up a certain way, but I asked Ralph to do me a custom setup here with... Uh, two on-offs and two momentary switches, and I'll explain what I wanted to do here. I wanted to have two on and off switches for the lighting, so whenever I um, power this up, I can turn on the uh, the salon lights on the inside and the outside, and also the uh, wheelhouse lights up on top, and then the uh, separate on-off switch, I wanted to be able to turn on and off the alligator eyes on the top of the uh, uh, wheelhouse up there on the top, because in the movie, those are actually aren't on at all. Most people think that... Uh, those were lit up all the time. If you go back and watch the movie, you might be surprised to find out that those are never lit up at all. But uh, just for an extra effect, we thought we'd light those up. And um, so we wanted to have that separate so they're not on all the time. And then the two momentary switches I wanted to have for my two sound effects that I showed you guys in the last video. So I got that all worked out. Everything's been wired up here. Um, I'm going to take my uh, flashlight here and show you guys. It's going to be kind of hard to see in here. And right now the wiring... Like usual on these models when you're halfway through them is a spaghetti mess, but whoop, I got my strobe light on there. Let me get to the right one. Now you can see inside there, down on the bottom is the uh, sound board. You guys saw that in the last video. Over here on the right-hand side is the uh, remote receiver board. And then uh, you can see maybe a little bit way up front there is the uh, speaker that I mounted. Pretty simple setup. I just uh, took a couple of pieces of really thick, heavy sprue and made uh, beam supports all the way across, epoxied that in place, and then I epoxied the speaker to that so it's kind of sitting in the middle there, facing down, and uh, that puts the sound out through the bottom of the ship with these uh, vents that we have over here on the side, and the sound comes through pretty nice. And then up on the top, I made like a little shelf out of um, sheet styrene there, and I've got my, my batteries sitting in there. Now three of the batteries, the AAAs are for the soundboard, and the 9 volt over there on the left is... Um, for the uh, lighting system and that's just a 9 volt rechargeable battery and every time it gets low I can just pull it out and recharge it and put it back in so that worked out pretty good the way I'm going to be doing is I'll be able to take the top of the wheelhouse off whenever I want to reach the batteries and um, it's you know I made extra long harnesses on those so they can pop right out and I'll have plenty of room to work with so that worked out really good and um, so I just finished up the last touches on this um, I'm going to be putting it all together now. I'm going to be cleaning up my wiring. I've got to spray some of my red oxide primer inside of here before I close this up because you can actually see a little bit of that edge through the uh, window, and I just want to make sure that that color matches and everything. But everything in here has been light blocked. You can see I uh, back painted all the lights and everything so they're not glaring. And I um, fine-tuned all my lights and everything, guys. One thing that I figured out was that when you want to look through the side... Uh, salon windows and look at the interior. I didn't want these lights on the outside to be super, super bright. I, I've seen some of the models where they're, those are kind of lit up really, really bright and um, they glare in your face really bad if you're trying to look inside that window. So I toned those down a little bit. They still light up plenty fine, but uh, not to where they're just, you know, like strobe lights or whatever. So um, I just wanted to give you guys a quick look at this. And uh, if you guys have any questions about how this is set up, I'll be happy to answer them for you. It's really simple, you know, the uh, wiring uh, schematic that you get with this control board will kind of explain everything. It's wired to the two momentary switches on the, uh, uh, that we showed you on, that we had on the sound board. And then the two on and off outputs are just controlling the negative side. So all of my lighting, the wiring is going, uh, the plus side of the wiring is going directly to the power from my 9 volt battery, the uh, red wire. And the uh, negative side is all connected to the uh, corresponding output wire 
on the uh, remote board. So it's it's really simple to set up. It's just, you know, um, I had to put a bunch of SMDs in here on both sides. We got uh, LED strip in the top of this, just a couple little short segments. I didn't want to over light this either. And a couple really small strips in the um, in the wheelhouse. And then uh, a couple of SMDs for the, for the uh, monster eyes up on the top. So the lighting is all really simple and all that. And um, I'll kind of explain that a little bit more. But what I want to do now is I want to get all my wiring tidied up here. And then I want to get this hull put together so I can put it up on the stand. And then I'll show you guys all the effects and everything. I also motorized this. And I'll show you a picture of the uh, motorized setup that I put in this. It's a really simple solution. I just used a little gear reduction motor, 9-volt uh, motor. And um, set up my own linkage for that. And it's really simple to do that too. So let me get this um, work together here, you guys. This is a step I've been kind of holding off on until um, I was able to get this video shot. So I want to get this uh, uh, all put together here. I'll get my wiring all tidied up on the inside. And then we'll show you the first time the full length of the model sitting on the stand. And then we'll um, show you some of the uh, lighting effects and all that. So I'll be right back with that, you guys. Okay, guys, I'm back with you again. It's been a couple of hours here. I spent some time getting my wiring all tidied up and zip-tied and cleaned up and everything on the inside arranged the way I wanted it. I had to run a couple power wires back to the uh, motor that I installed in the tail to turn the propeller. I'll just put uh, a picture up here on the screen so you guys can see that setup. It's really simple. Just use one of those little gear reduction motors, the same one that you see in the Tenet Controls uh, 1350 TOS Enterprise. Lighting kit for the Bassards. It's a really neat little motor. I like them because they're good high torque motors. They don't make a lot of noise. And um, that worked out perfect for the propeller. It turns the propeller at just the right speed at the voltage I wanted it to, so I didn't have to do much adjusting there. And that all worked out really nice. Um, and then uh, just started connecting all the hull together. This is the first time I've had the, the model really all in one piece. And uh, it's quite impressive, you guys. It's like 42 inches. Like I said, I printed this at 65% off the 100% STL files which would have made it uh, 66 inches and that was just too big for me I wouldn't have a place to put something like that if I was going to make it into RC or something like that I would have uh, definitely made it the biggest size but this is going to be a beautiful model on the shelf and um, I'm really happy with how it's fitting together everything's working out really good and this model has a lot of really cool features to it too you guys I really like some of the detail I'll kind of show you really quick up here on the um, as I mentioned, I'm making this so it can be removable, so we have our batteries underneath of there. But this little hatch opens and closes. It's got a stairwell in there, which I haven't put in yet. Um, but these little dorsal vents open up like this, which is really cool. And they provide a little cam mechanism in there uh, that I had to print out and everything that uh, allows all these to work at the same time instead of having to pick them all up by one or whatever. So that's really nice. And you, if you want to get really creative, you could motorize all this stuff and do you know, RC stuff on it and... Uh, it would be really, really awesome, but I like it just the way it is. It's got a lot of neat features. It's got the little detachable um, uh, skiff or what, lifeboat, they want to call it back there. That actually has some neat little covers that go on that that can slide and open and everything, too. Uh, we got a whole bunch of detail parts that need to go on this model. We got the whole propeller guard thing there in the back and a bunch of tie-downs and um, hand grabs and ladders that go up on side the superstructure and everything. A whole bunch of neat little stuff. We got some more of the little... Um, you know, razorback detail that goes on here, some on the bottom, some on the sides. So a little bit more work to do, but what I've been doing is um, slowly working on the seams here, you guys. You can see where I've been starting to work. Uh, what I do is, you know, sand a little bit and put a little bit of primer down and check it again. I'm using a mixture of um, diluted um, perfect plastic putty. I put that in a little Dixie cup and I just squirt a little water in there and stir it until it starts to get thin enough where my... Um, syringe here will pick it up without clogging or anything and I'm just coming along and putting in these little seams you can see this one right here I haven't touched yet but I'm just going down and putting that little uh, put you know until it's level with the rest of it then I do a little bit of sanding or whatever or wipe it off with a wet towel until it's smooth I'm trying not to lose a lot of that rivet detail around it but in some cases you're gonna lose a little bit of that with the sanding and everything so uh, I figured out a neat, a neat little fix for that. I've got my um, solar res here. This is the UV curable solar res. Um, and um, I've got it in this little bottle with a micro applicator tick, tip. And um, with a little bit of practice, I've, I've, I've found that I've been able to dab this on here and make little domes that are almost the exact you know, same look as the rivets here. So what I do is uh, after I get all my sanding and fill work done, wherever the rivets are a little bit weak or whatever, I come in here and just kind of put them back and hit them real quick with my UV light. Then once I prime over it, you can't even tell. It's all blended in. There's a couple spots I've done here that um, 
you can't see it because I blended it back in but it's all working out really good a little bit more sanding to do down here that's just putty on there a um, few little things like that but uh, it'll it'll all clean up really nice once it's all primed and everything I'm gonna prime the whole model with this red oxide and then I'm gonna go over it with a sort of a dirty uh, medium brown which is really close to what I see look you know for the look of the Nautilus the rust on the Nautilus um, it's kind of almost like uh, copper uh, you know, like if you see a really, really old penny that turns sort of brown, um, not green or whatever, but so that sort of dark brown, that's how the Nautilus looks to me. And uh, we'll, we'll do kind of a thin coat of that on top of the, the red oxide, so some of the red oxide will creep through a little bit too and it'll kind of blend in. Then we'll do some nice hand uh, weathering details on the rivets and some drain, you know, drain off stains and stuff like that. To me, it's all about the paint job on this model, you guys. If you get that right, it'll look really, really nice. And I think we should be able to match it up pretty good. I've got some good screenshots and all that. So the whole next video that I'm going to do is all about the paint job on this. And I'll talk about how I got all the seams cleaned up and show you the actual painting of it. And we'll have a lot of fun with that. So this video will be a little bit short. But now I want to show you some of the features on this model. Um, the uh, uh, electronics that we built in, we took uh, this tenant controls, four button setup. I've got two on and off and two momentaries. So the first thing we do is we come up here and we turn on the power. That'll be hidden underneath a little uh, hatch right here when we get all done. And uh, then we can hit our button here which turns on the main lighting effects. You can see into the salon down there. And as I mentioned, I, um, I kept the uh, lights on the outside purposely really dim here, you guys. I've seen them lit up really, really bright. And there's a couple of them I'm going to dim down even a little bit more. And uh, to do that, I'm just taking some... Uh, some uh, a black wash and just washing over those bulbs a little bit until they come down to where I like them. That's a that's the easiest way to do that from the outside. And uh, then once we put the outer ring on here in the dome and everything, it'll all look really good. But I just wanted to give the appearance of some light there. And then that way when you get up really close with your eye, you can look in here and not get blinded by all that. Okay, so now we can see we got all the detail in there. You can see the whole cabin in there. You can see the water fountain in the background. And what I really like is um, you can see the Persian rugs I put in. Those look really good. I printed those on some paper and then put them on some plastic backing to give them a little bit of thickness. But back in the back, you can see Nemo's organ, and I really, I'm really glad you can see that. I'm going to try to zoom in on that for you guys a little bit and uh, see if it'll show up for us here, if it'll focus on that. There we go, kind of, kind of focused. But uh, that's, that's a really cool feature on this model. You can see the pipes going up to the ceiling and everything. So that's really neat. And... Um, we got up here, we got our wheelhouse. You can see the, um, the green lighting I did in there. Um, all the little parts that I printed came out really nice. I printed all those on the resin printer. And that little clear plastic tube in there is just a piece of clear plastic sprue. That was like a little ballast indicator or whatever they had in the uh, cab in there that I noticed when I watched the movie. And that came out really cool. Um, I've got the separate button here where I can turn on the... Uh, I guess you want to call it the alligator eyes. I mentioned that I wanted to do that because in the movie they're not actually ever on. That kind of surprised me um, because you always see this model built with those lit up. But uh, in the movie they're actually never on. But, you know, it's a, it's a fun little feature and I wanted to have that, you know, to where I could turn it off and on. Then back here you can see the uh, propeller turning. And that looks really, really cool. I got it at about the right speed, I think. Uh, kind of looking at some screenshots from the movie and matching it up to that. Then you can see we got our steerable rudder here. These dive planes move. As I mentioned, these little um, vents open up here on the top and just a lot of neat little stuff. The uh, lifeboat here is removable. It's actually got little um, slidable covers on the top of that that you can slide open or closed if you want to show it open or closed. And all the hatches open or closed, our dive planes work and stuff like that. So it's a really, really cool model. I've just got a bunch of these little Razorbacks to finish putting on the little hull details here and then a bunch of little detail parts So we're gonna be painting this thing pretty quick But uh, also built in two sound effects here. We'll show you the first one, which is the uh, the cruising sound That goes along with our propeller here in the back and That that's on a loop this new little card. I'm using um, Has that ability to do that? over the old cards I used to use where they just kind of ran out of time and that was it. And I think the sound level is coming out of this is just about right, guys. I don't want it over overpowering or whatever. You can just notice it. 
And then we've got the uh, the famous Nautilus ramming sound. So yeah, we got those little vents on the bottom, and like I talked about, that sound is coming through there really good. So that's about it for this one, you guys. Um, everything's everything's working out really nice. I'm really happy with it. I'll come back in the next video and um, show you the uh, the paint job we're going to be doing on this. We'll spend a lot of time on that video. I'm going to have a lot of fun with that. I really enjoy, enjoy doing rust and weathering type painting, and we'll try to capture the look of the Nautilus, and we'll have a lot more detail done on it. Um, I'll be back in a couple days. I'm painting on the Nomad. We had some bad weather down here where the clear coat I'm using I couldn't spray in the temperature that we're at like I mentioned before so things are looking a lot better here. We're getting that ready. Uh, uh, I really want to focus on that one and get that one out to my client and um, then I want to get the Nautilus here wrapped up you guys so it's off the table and off the shelf. I'm going to put the refit aside for a couple of weeks here. Don't worry it won't be that long. Um, but once we come back on the refit, we're going to stay on the refit for a while. I'm not going to start anything else. If I do, it'll be just, uh, just a couple little small jobs, a couple prints or something like that. Doing, still doing a lot of 3D printing, doing some future 3D printing models here that you guys are going to enjoy. And um, we're looking forward to showing you that. But uh, yeah, we need to, I figured out staying on the, on the, when you're doing the Aztec painting on the refit, you really have to stay focused on that. And that's what I want to do. Once I get in that groove, I like to stay in that groove and not jump back and forth. I'm finding that it's kind of my little Achilles heel here that I don't really like working on, uh, you know, too many different models at once. I start to get kind of disorganized and lose my train of thought and all that. And I'm very much a, you know, get in the groove kind of guy. So, okay, you guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is going to be really fun finishing this up. It's going to look great on the shelf. And, uh, looks like you guys are really enjoying this build series. So that's cool. This is a favorite subject of mine. And, um, Glad you guys are liking it, too. We'll see you in the next couple of days, guys. We're going to come back with a little bit on that Nomad. Uh, I've got a new Ford GT video coming out pretty soon. i got another parts update on that. And then we got another one of the catalog kits coming in that um, I'm excited to share with you guys. It's a sci-fi subject that I think you guys will really be interested in. And I'm excited to get started on that one, too. That should be starting in the next couple of weeks. All right, guys, you take care out there, and we'll see you next time. And happy modeling, everyone.